cancer causing agents now proven by the federal government and uh, you know in Portland has a very high level of air toxics, among the five highest in the in the nation because of ESCO, which again is to our east, and mm -hmm. the wind pre prevalent wind is from the uh, west. Mm -hmm. uh, you got the Fremont up there with all those cars going across that, and and uh, and the air blowing, uh, and you've got the Minnesota Freeway, the old mm -hmm. Minnesota Freeway, which mm -hmm. is now going to be uh, take a lot more traffic with this big new bridge. Well, the air pollute, the North Northeast Coalition said, "No way, we're not supporting this." Mm -hmm. You know, but are they are citizens powerful these days? Well, it doesn't seem like they are. Uh, getting th this this project, they've already spent a hundred and thirty million on it. A hundred and thirty million dollars planning, doing an environmental impact statement. All that PR work they've done on behalf of it, all the lobbying they did, you know, paid Parisi and uh, 1.4 million, Mark Graff a million, all that uh, sales job they put together there is now up over 130 million, and they're still at their claim spending 1.9 million dollars a month going forward for the next biennium. Well, I think it's higher than that. I think it's more like three million, um, because. Washington said we're only going to give 25 million and Oregon it's your turn to put in more you got to put in 50 million so 75 divided by 24 is over 3 million not 1.9 million which is what they're claiming so this slush fund of monies and which they're spending how much how much how much how much, how much? Uh, three million a month uh, that's what they spent in the last biennium that just ended June 30th right. and this <coughs> this year uh, it's going to be I think over 3 again Three million a month, Gee. trying to get this thing justified. Uh, justified. Well, so they keep on ticking. You know, we don't have the governor saying it's time for a reset. We don't have the mayor saying it's time for a reset. We don't have the metro president Tom Hughes saying it's time for a reset. <coughs> Who's signing these checks? Who's signing the checks, Ron? Well, ODOT and WashDOT. WashDOT was that the governor? That's the or? Oregon Transportation Commission. Made and the Washington, well, Gail Ackerman's the chair, and she's okay. a big supporter of this project. And, you know, they, Oregon's way of things, we don't do line item uh, transportation projects. Right. We do a, a big budget and we pass the money on to the Transportation Commission, and they right. decide which project gets the money. So, and, <clears throat> and the problem with the highway projects are is twofold. Number one, they they always underestimate, so they're let's take the project that uh, we've been watching uh, as you go out McLaughlin towards Milwaukee and Oregon City. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, kind of structured overpass there <coughs> that is between Powell and in Hawthorne. Right. Well, that's they've spent twice as much money as they projected on that. Twice as much. So let's take the, Corv the the biggest project in the state recently, fixing uh, the highway between Newport and Corvallis mm -hmm. through Eddyville there. And, mm -hmm. uh, that's way up over 50% more than they projected, way over 50% more. I don't know exactly what the number is. It's not quite double yet, but I mean, so so they keep they keep underestimating the cost of these projects. So what if what if they were <coughs> fifty percent off on this three point eight billion dollar uh, project? Uh, that that's only one point nine billion, um, and where is that money coming from? And and when the independent review panel looked at them, they said, "Oh well, gosh, uh, this project is going to create more uh, congestion down." Uh, at the Rose Quarter, where the freeway narrows from three lanes to two lanes, you need to spend 1.3 billion to fix the Rose Quarter area. Yeah. On top of that, yeah. and we already talked about the fact that it narrows down to three lanes up right. there at at Delta <coughs> Park, and that's right. going to cause congestion in the morning rush hour. So, I mean, we've got uh, it's it's really out of hand in this state. And so who's looking out for the public's interest? I mean, other than yourself. Well, the legislature did a good job of that. They didn't pass this they joint pass. memorial. Okay, okay. And they didn't put any money into construction okay, money. Okay. So, so, and I don't believe they want to raise the the gasoline tax again okay. in order to fund this project. 
State Treasurer Wheeler is saying, gosh, uh, not sure about this revenue bonds uh, for the toll on the tolling. <coughs> so you have a situation where there are people looking out for us. KDR Brewer, Jefferson Smith led the opposition in the legislature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Lou Frederick, uh, who you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he's my legislator. He's real big on the air pollution problem yeah, okay. and the air toxic problem okay. we have from the uh, freeway and the Minnesota freeway coming through here. And it's going to get worse if they build that big six center interchange bridge. So why is it getting done anyway? It's because the special interests. We're talking about the truckers. We're talking about the Port of Portland and Bill Wyatt and Tom Imason and the people at the port who want this uh, big project. So the car, the trucks coming up off Marine Drive, mm. they're talking about an $880 million intersection Jeez. at Hayden Island and uh, Marine Drive. $880 million for that combined, uh, you know, so that, so that their trucks can go uh, uh, alongside the freeway out of Hayden Island, way out over into the river before they have to um, merge into the, into the new bridge. Ron, what about our congressional delegation? I mean, you know. Well, that's the I thing. Mean, what, 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 Is, are we going to get some we got, federal money for this? We got, we got Earl. We got no. We got we're, uh, Earl says there is no community consensus on this. That It's in we his did. district. But then Mark Kraft and, was basically <laughs> the at one time. Yeah, he but supported he, that. He's, he, Earl has refused to, to go to bat for a, for a big uh, allocation, uh, okay. in the, uh, a line item allocation in the, in the federal budget. He says there's not a community consensus. He knows that every environmental organization in the mm -hmm. state okay. is opposed to this thing. Okay. And, what about and Jamie, Jamie, uh, Herrera Butler, okay. Republican, okay. newly elected uh, right. okay. in the, the Clark County part of this area. Okay. She's saying, well, she thinks we need to have a vote on this because okay. she doesn't think people support it now. And she knows that her constituents over there in Clark County, and particularly in East Clark County, are not too interested in having to pay tolls uh, at the level that they would have to pay on this thing. And the she knows that the, her Republican fellows in Congress uh, are saying, well, we're trying to keep taxes down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, all these infrastructure projects, uh, those are paid for out of taxes. And uh, you may say, well, they're gasoline taxes, they're user taxes, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. almost 50% of the highway funds are coming out of the general you fund. You predict there will be a vote? You think you think it'll get, you think it'll get No, there? I don't think there'll be a vote, except on light rail okay. in Vancouver. And light rail is really the only certain money they have, because the Oregon legislature, I don't think, is going to put up the $450 million, and I think they've made that clear this mm -hmm. time around. Mm -hmm. I don't think the federal government's going to put up $800 million like they keep saying they will, because the Republicans are not they're in control in the House, which starts the budget, and yeah. I, I don't think they want to have this kind of money being spent right. on this kind of a project. And uh, Jamie Herrera Butler is a tip-off to that. Mm -hmm. She's not supporting it. So, uh, well, what about the transit money that would come into this for light rail through the Federal Transportation Administration? It's almost a billion bucks. Well, that uh, that money, that money will be good for light rail. But, but, there's an important but there. The operating funds for light rail in Washington State, it's required that they vote on it. Hmm. Uh, they have to vote for the operating funds because it's like taxes. Mm -hmm. And that's a, a law in uh, the state of Washington. And the Vancouver people tried to, the business people who want it over there, uh, and not all the business people do, uh, they tried to get this changed at the Washington State Legislature, but they were unsuccessful. They still have to have a vote. That vote is coming up. The CTRAN, the transit agency, is, and their board is going to put it on the ballot in November of 2012. Well, if that fails, then they're not going to get the transit money either because the Federal Transfer Administration won't mm -hmm. give you monies to build a light rail system if you're not going to pay for the operating funds to operate it after it's built. So. You know, Washington's legislature, they got these two huge projects up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. One is where the the bridge coming across Lake Washington, right. 520, meets into I-5. And the other is the Alaska Viaduct uh, through downtown Seattle. And that's their which, focus. 
And th and those two <laughs> projects, that's what they want. Yep. And they're so far ahead of this, it's not even funny. They're underfunded, too. They're not fully funded. And so how is this project down here in little old Vancouver right, right. going to push aside those right, uh, Seattle right, projects? Right, right. Hasn't happened so far. Will this be Ain't going to happen. Let me ask that. No, Will this be built? it's not going to be built. And the other things that could stop it, it's not going to get the money. It's not going to get it from the Oregon legislature. It's not going to get it from the Washington legislature. And when they vote down those transit monies, it, I'd, and yet we still go ahead. We saw an editorial in the Portland Tribune yes. this last week. And the Oregonian. And it was it. So, uh, 29 editorials in the Oregonian yes. and, an or, and an editorial in the Portland Tribune saying, uh, well, gosh, we've spent all this money and we got to get our money's worth out of what we spent. Right, right. We got to go ahead and build this thing. And uh, I'm not sure about that logic. I, I mean, I'm not sure that that makes sense if we've, if we've spent all this money and we can't finance this exactly, $3.6 exactly. billion or $3.8 billion project. Could also be stopped by a lawsuit, mm -hmm. and uh, in federal court under the National Envi Environmental Protection Act, mm -hmm. there are some vulnerabilities. The in-water work window, uh, you know, you've got endangered salmon runs coming down the Columbia. Mm -hmm. The in-water work window is it going to be four months? Is it going to be eight months? Is it going to be twelve months? That's a real question. And the final thing that that could stop it is uh, you you have. Uh, uh, made a bunch of changes to this uh, project, and if they if they haven't filed a supplemental environmental impact statement right. for those changes, right. Right. they're acting like it's the same. Uh, then they could get stuck on that. But they so, still have that pot of money, that consultant money, that will continue to be well, spent. Well, yeah, that's and, and that's what been signed off. And that's where I'm thinking, Kitzhaber and and, and Adams need to wake up, mm -hmm. and they're. Uh, their uh, record is going to be besmirched by spending all this money yes. uh, on something that they're supporting, but isn't can't get done. Well, look, well, look like we got about another minute, and I naturally wanted to get into another arena. I really appreciate that update aspect of it, but I wanted to talk a little bit about journalism, if you will. The whole issue of that is that's the issue of today. But we may have to come back. I, I don't want to. I don't want to spend a half a minute with that piece. And as I understand, you're going to be making an announcement here very shortly. Well, I about, hope to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what we'll do is that uh, when we take that opportunity to reschedule do it another something, time. We'll, do another you so we'll have some time. Okay. I really appreciate the opportunity to come and talk about the Columbia River crossing again. And I think it's on a lot of people's minds yes, it right is. now. Very much so. And I, this is an important yes, it opportunity. Is. Yes, it is. And thank you very much. Thank you Chris. very much, Ron. Appreciate that very much. Again, folks, thank you very much. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.